brothers with Ahmed today we are going to learn what are dynamic cursors in SQL Server so first of all what are cursors cursors are the objects which allow us to access data row by row from result set so we have a selected some data from some base tables or views or some query and then we can loop through that result set and get one row at a time so those are cursors dynamic cursors show us the modified data in the result set from source while cursor is open so uh, the data values order and membership of rows can change on each of the fetch so uh, I'm going to show you the demo how exactly it works. in the last video we learn the static uh, cursors so in those uh, cursors one we select the data from the base tables or the views or the objects then uh, if anything happen in the update delete or insert or even the objects were dropped uh, once the data was selected in the cursor that didn't care because it saved the data in memory and it used the data from the memory and uh, here in the dynamic cursor it does care about the changes so we will see in action how exactly it work dynamic uh, cursors are scrollable we have used first last prior next relative these all are the scrollable scroll labels so we can point uh, or extract the result from the uh, we can um, extract the row from the result set uh, to the any point uh, by using these different uh, first uh, last uh, prior next uh, relative uh, uh, keywords uh, and uh, but one thing uh, the absolute uh, does not work uh, with the dynamic cursor because the values can be updated deleted and all that so on each of the fetch so maybe when um, you are using the absolute uh, the in the next fetch uh, my, my, the, there is a possibility the values has been updated in the table or deleted or a uh, new record is inserted so that that doesn't really make sense to use absolute uh, here but uh, if you want to take a look on uh, how, what our cursor I have a video define the steps for cursor I have another video with, where I have talked a lot of things about static cursors you can uh, watch those videos and learn here we are learning a dynamic cursors that get updated uh, while they are open if somebody made the change in the base table and uh, or tables or the views from wherever we are selecting the results so let's go to the demo here one thing I want to give you a scenario let's say at 10 p.m. we want to send an email to the users but there is a possibility while we run this uh, process uh, the, the cursor that send an email to the users but there is a possibility some of the records are coming with the delay okay so may they might come at 10 or 10 or 10 or 15 and our cursor process runs for two hours okay now at 10 o'clock what we fetch that's fine we fetch 100,000 record but we also want to keep fetching the new records which comes till at the end of the process of our cursor so while our cursor is going to run for two hours if any new inserts are coming or if somebody delete the records and it the email was not sent we just want to delete that so maybe we are making corrections to the tables or the data set so that's the possible we can use the dynamic cursor in those scenarios where results that will be fetched from the um, base tables or the uh, views or uh, uh, other objects or whatever we use to fetch the uh, record set now in this case what I have I have a, a DDL for you I have customer uh, uh, table which customer ID name as street address city and state and I'm inserting two records here let's insert two records here now I'll go to the cursor and I have defined the variables here because when I fetch or get the row from the cursor I want to save those data points or the values to some variables so that's why I have declare all these variables next part is I'm declaring a variable so it said declare cursor name whatever the name you want to give and then you have to say cursor and then here you will be saying dynamic if you are uh, creating a dynamic cursor so you have to say keyword dynamic here and then you say for and then you have to provide the select statement here that is going to return the results okay next part you are opening a cursor you open a cursor 
and here I'm just printing a message and cursor is open and now I'm fetching the records here so I'm fetching a next from the cursor into the variables so I got the first row and then I save those values into the variables here uh, we can use a uh, first uh, we can use last we can use a uh, relative or we can use a uh, prior anything uh, we want to select from that data set uh, we can uh, use that uh, keyword here and select according to our requirement now we are uh, entering in a loop and we are using the global variable so we are saying at the rate fetch fetch status zero while it is zero okay keep me in the loop so while we fetch it okay the status set to zero and now we get enter in the loop here these two lines I'm just using to put a wait for 15 seconds and with the if I will just use this one it will print all the records at one time with the raise error with no weight when I'm using this one it will print right away for each of the record so that's why I'm using these uh, two uh, lines of uh, code here so I wanna wait here sometime go back and make the changes like insert new record update record or delete record so I can show you okay our changes are reflected or not next part I'm printing those uh, variable values that we fetched from the cursor result set so I'm using concat function that uh, I'm using uh, some uh, integer va va uh, variables uh, some string variables I'm concatenating them and then uh, I'm printing them so I can see the values or show you the values next uh, we are fetching the next record from the cursor result set and into the variables and then uh, it will keep looping till the end of the cursor so once we have no results uh, in the cursor uh, result set it will be done so that's how it is going to work then we close the cursor we deallocate the cursor now let's uh, run this one so what we see here let me go back stop the query now let's uh, comment this out first and run this one so what we see here it comes here open the cursor okay and then it show us two results two records that it fetched from this by using this query it fetched those results from the customer table and then it came inside the loop and printed those out for us now as we are using the dynamic cursor so the goal is to show you in the dynamic cursor if there is a change that happens in the base table let's say update delete or insert the the cursor when it is going to fetch the next record it is going to show us the change or the it is going to update the definition of a result set so it is going to extract that records or changes from the base table or tables or views so let's run this one right now we know that we have only two records in the table so what I'm gonna do this is what we see two records I'm gonna run the cursor here go back insert the third record so the cursor is open and here what we see till it didn't print anything because we have wait for 15 seconds so it didn't print anything it's gonna print the first one on 15 so it did print the first one and as a we um, started the cursor or fetch the records uh, even in before the inserting new record uh, it should uh, show us uh, three records because it is a dynamic so on each of the fetch uh, it is going to go to the base table if there are any changes it's going to bring those changes so if you see here um, if it would be static uh, it would be done as of now but now it is dynamic and it went back and bring the third record for us so in the dynamic if you insert a new record and the cursor is working in the next fetch it is going to bring that record for you now we have three records right here I have three records in the table now what I'm going to, what I'm going to do here I'm going to run the cursor and delete two records so I run the cursor we have second one and two now let's go and delete two records we deleted two records we have only one record John Smith here when we come and cursor is still uh, we are waiting for 15 seconds that's why it is not getting there yet but uh, let's go to the message and see what happened 
so it did show us only one record here but let's see what it is going to show us so it is it did show us two results even we have deleted the two uh, uh, records from here why because when it it came to the fetch very first one right away and then it was here so it fetched the next one and then uh, for sorry it fetched the very first one right away and then we came back uh, we, on this side we deleted the record for the Amir but it already had fetched that one so it didn't care about that and next we have deleted Raza but John Smith was there so it showed us the two records let's go back and do one more thing now if let's go back here drop the table I want to show you this one is a little tricky so I want to show you all that so let's insert two records now we have two records and let's put the third record as well so we have three records now now if I will go ahead and run the uh, cursor what happened now when I run the cursor it is going to fetch one record right away so if I will delete all the records uh, then uh, it will still show me one record because it has fetch that right away so we are waiting here inside you know that's uh, the reason so when we are going to go to for the next fetch it is going to say okay I don't see those records anymore so it is but it has already one record that it has a fetch so let's run this one and we delete everything from the table three records so if you he come here right now cursor is open and we see that this is as it has fetched the very first one so it is shown as the only one so when the next time it went to fetch the other ones it uh, look at the base table updates or deletes and all that it say okay there is no record so that I can't really show you anything so now let's go back here insert these records back okay so let me insert these records two records here and one record here now what we are going to do we are going to show you how the update uh, work so hold on one second what happened two records fine and then the, I'm inserting the third one three so we have three records all right so now what happened if uh, we would run uh, this uh, cursor and we are going to update the values right now let's let's uh, go ahead and uh, run the cursor it is going to fetch the first one right away and uh, then uh, we, we are going to update that one so for first one it is going to show us uh, Amir and then we will we, when we will update these records with the no name it will be showing us a no name so let's run this one come back here update all these three records but as the first uh, record is already fetched uh, and uh, it is in the loop uh, so that's going to show us the very first one and then uh, the f for the next fetch when it is going to go it is going to go and grab us uh, the uh, with the no name um, records uh, as we have updated the cursor so you see here any updates uh, or uh, deletes uh, or uh, inserts uh, we are making on the base table uh, or tables uh, it is reflecting us on the next fetch so uh, if uh, there, there are records deleted or inserted or updated uh, when it is going to go fetch the next time it is going to grab those but whatever had happened it's not going to change that so uh, this was already fetched and uh, maybe we have fetched five records or, um, or we have already printed maybe hundred records and then we made the update so first hundred will be as it is uh, then whatever the change for the next fetch that's what is going to be uh, updated so uh, uh, you you can understand this part now the dynamic cursor does uh, take the changes uh, from the base uh, table or tables uh, or a, a query that we have used here and uh, refresh the data or result set uh, on each of the fetch so let me uh, go back here one more time 
and uh, instead of I'm just gonna remove this part and show you real quick uh, now we have three records here so I want to show you the scrolling part so instead of saying uh, next I can use the last here so if I want to just see the last record I can use the last I can fetch the last record from the result set so if I want to use the last here and then I can use prior so I can kind of bottom up so here I use the last record and then I, I use the prior so in each of the loop it started you know uh, from the uh, bottom and kept going so you can use the uh, you can use first if you want to use f fetch the first record here and there is no prior to the first uh, so that's why it showed only uh, one record if you can use next uh, so the very first time we fetch the f uh, first here and then uh, we are saying next uh, so we will see all the records so you can use the next uh, that's also is going to give you the very first record from the result set and you, you can uh, use the uh, next here to keep uh, fetching the next in the sequence so thanks very much for watching this uh, video and uh, uh, just to understand one more time if uh, you are interested to uh, get the changes you want to change while your cursor is open you want to go back and see the changes and bring the, the uh, cursor and uh, want to uh, do some uh, operation that you are doing in the cursor your cursor type should be dynamic if you are interested in some specific time while you are ex uh, while you first time extracted the result set uh, and uh, after that you don't care about the changes uh, you will be using static cursors in SQL server thanks very much and uh, watch the other videos uh, where we have uh, defined the steps uh, for cursor and static cursor so you can learn different stuff